Rising Lads, welcome back to Kossi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kossi. We are back again this early morning with the Arsenal Early Morning Show. This time, it's going to be a little bit different because news is coming. You know, news are coming in, uh, you know, a little bit scanty, of course, because uh, that's the reason of uh, um, courtesy of, of, of the international break. So we're going to be looking at the top 10 Arsenal transfer targets in January, tries to analyze them, look at the debates, look at the uh, look at the strong points, and maybe the chances we have to sign these players. Obviously, you guys, you know that we have already been linked with around um, 20, 30 players in the January transfer window, but I think 10 of them, I've selected only 10 of them that I think will be very, very crucial to our January transfer window. And the reason is I've, uh, I've, gone for, uh, I've gone for eight midfielders and only two forwards. We need a forward in the general transfer window. If Lacazette doesn't leave, it, uh, if uh, Gabriel Martinelli doesn't leave, I doubt Arsenal will go for a January uh, signing of a striker. But definitely, because there are so many players that are running out of contract uh, in January, the likes of Andrea Belotti, the likes of Dusan Vlahovic, um, all their contracts are going to be running down in the summer. So probably could, you know, could Arsenal take advantage of the situation. And definitely... I'm also going to be looking at eight midfielders because Thomas Partey, Mohamed El Neni, Granit Xhaka are all going to be out during the January period. So we need a reinforcement. We need someone to come in. A lot of players have already been, been linked with Arsenal in that regard. So make sure you subscribe, you smash a like on the video because in this video, we're going to dive into all those players that Arsenal could, uh, could potentially get in in the January transfer window we're sponsored by the beautiful people at h and a scammers so make sure you do check them out obviously this month they have done it they have sponsored us and make sure please and please do give them a follow uh on on facebook they have a, a facebook page they're called h and you know, h and a scammers you'll find all the information about them there make sure you check them out they have the best gaming experience in the country make sure you check them out for um for all your games gta fifa 21 fifa 22 all the games that you want to play, they have got you covered. But at the moment, in terms of content, I've got you covered. And let's get to it. Because, guys, the first thing we're going to be looking at uh, is um, a striker. And all the strikers that have been linked with Arsenal, uh, especially the come this January transfer window. Let us start off with that Dusan Vlahovic because he's been in the name uh, that has gathered a lot of uh, attention, a lot of talk, um, and uh, has also attracted the attention of Fabrizio Romano. Now, Dusan Vlahovic, as much as we know that his contract is about to run down and doesn't want to stay in, um, in, in, in Flores, uh, in Italy, Arsenal and Spurs are looking at him. He's one of those uh, you know, very, very top strikers uh, in Europe uh, you know, at the moment, scoring 21 goals last season and has already scored 10 goals this season in 12 appearances for Fiorentina. So Arsenal are saying uh, the, you know, the fact that Alexander Lacazette could leave in the summer, the fact that we could also lose Piel uh, you know, in the, you know, in, in the coming summer, uh, but one means we need to get a possible replacement short term for Lacazette long term uh, for uh, Piel Mrikabamian. But also, guys, come to think about it, in January when Piel Mrikabamian leaves for AFCON, that vo uh, there's going to be a very, very big void that needs to be filled uh, there and then. And probably Edin Ketia could be leaving for uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach or any other club in January to try to find game time. The same applies with players like Gabriel Martinelli. They want to leave uh, in January to find some game time. So Arsenal is looking at a possible replacement um, of Lacazette Nketia and long-term Piel Mrikabamian. Dusan Vlahovic is the man that has been linked uh, so far uh, very, very closely to a move. It is 70 million pounds, um, close to 80, that has been reported by Fabrizio Romano. I'm looking at that price in January, and I'm looking at, uh, I'm not saying does Arsenal, do Arsenal have this money? Uh, in January, reports from Italy have indicated that we are more than willing to pay more than 70 million in January for the player. F uh, Fiorentina have already come out and said, we are willing to sell. We would love to sell the player if the right offer comes in. My big question and the only question I have is, can Arsenal beat off the competition and can we convince the player to join the Emory Stadium come January 2022? Now, the second player, again, is a forward much, much rated. Right from the Euros, I think we've been linked with Alexander Isak and you guys know the Swedish boy is a maestro. He's a heavy talent. He's a diamond of a talent. And he's been linked with a couple of Premier League clubs now, including Arsenal, including Liverpool, Chelsea, Manchester United, and a couple of others. Now, just like Dusan Blahovic, um, 
alexander isaac's price is also very 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 high around 70 80 90 it could also close to 100 million because one of those young strikers in europe that are really really rated arsenal have, have, have followed uh you know uh, uh, alexander isaac right from the summer and i've always felt like maybe he's one of those players that uh, uh could bring some kind of different dimension to arsenal many arsenal fans have actually thought about alexander isaac um as the new pelmer kabamyang as the new Thierry Henry as the new uh, you know uh, you know eduardo and a couple of uh, you know other legendary strikers you know probably is the you know is the, the possible replacement probably he is done my opinion my own opinion ar around uh, alexander isaac is if i get to, if we get to you know to get him uh, in january f and probably for 70 million i'll take him if we get to get him uh, in the summer for less than 80 million i'll take him but both of them dozan blahovic and alexander isaac are very 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 good players and definitely if arsenal get one of them will actually have got a very 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 good player now still still talking about forwards in january we've been linked with another talented you know an another talented one called noah lang now noah lang um, is uh, is, is a winger currently Arsenal are not in a crisis for wingers actually we need to offload some Pepe is on the bench you have the likes of Gabriel Martinelli also sitting and waiting on the bench so look we do not have a crisis we do not have uh, you know uh, uh, um, uh, an immediate need for a winger but good look it doesn't hurt to eye you know it, it doesn't hurt to add some quality it doesn't hurt you know hurt to add some you know squad depth to the team now according to reports that have actually come out Arsenal would love to add another winger to their squad and that name is Noah Lang playing uh, currently uh, in the Netherlands still very very young he fits into the project um, you know you know Arsenal at the moment young players that can develop uh, you know um, you know that can be developed together uh, train together so that they can actually pull in the same direction. Those are not my words. The words of Josh Kroenke. So, look, I'm th uh, I'm still thinking about it. If Arsenal, at the end of the day, can get Noah Lang, probably one player that can wait on the bench as Emil Smith Rowe, Odegaard, and um, and Bukayo Saka start, and maybe in cases of injuries, in in, in, in cases of uh, uh, you know players being you know ruled out, uh, in players uh, in cases of players uh, needing you know squad rotation, then players like Noah Lang could be actually uh, brought in. Mikel Arteta loves the player, Edu loves the player. We wait to see what you know what will happen with Noah Lang. I mean, it's the same situation with uh, Maina Solomon linked with Arsenal, uh, you know, a lot, but I, I don't see it as a you know as a transfer that could happen in January, probably in the summer, but he's been linked with us in January, and let's see where that leads, uh, leads us. Now, finally, let's get to the midfielders, because there is a midfield crisis with or without the January AFCON. I want to say this, Arsenal do have a midfield crisis with or without January AFCON. Think about it. Pate is injured. He's, you know, he picked up a muscle injury. Yes, it is slight, and I've reported about that. It's a little bit slight. It's not really, really grave. It's not really um, something to be afraid of. But at the end of the day, Arsenal will need to bring in midfield reinforcements. Xhaka is getting older, um, and he's nearing his exit at Arsenal Football Club. We all know that. And obviously, Pate needs a long-term partner um, in that pivot. Also, I, I, know I still feel like Arsenal needs a very good attacking midfielder, despite the fact that, uh, you know, ESR uh, and Martin Odegaard are doing the job. But I feel like we might need to bring in someone ecstatic, someone with exquisite talent, someone that is really, 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 um, you know, a joy to watch. So probably um, I'm, I'm still advocating for two midfielders not really in january uh, but probably we could get one long term uh, in january and one short term in january so we've been linked with a, with a couple of midfielders to replace thomas Pate when he goes out uh, you know for afcon in january but definitely to replace jaka in long term and uh, as well to replace jaka at the moment to fit in uh, to, to 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 sit in for jaka at the moment when he is out injured who are these players and what they are uh, what are their chances of them joining arsenal football club let us start off with dennis zakaria borussia Mönchengladbach. Uh, at the moment is um you know he's swiss just like uh, uh granite jaka and many people have, uh, have already done the analogy that jaka is actually not better than zakaria now i'm not going to do the comparison in this video i think it doesn't make any sense because it's all about uh, letting you know uh, which players have been linked with arsenal and which players do top the list so Definitely, Zakaria, in terms of midfielders, he is topping the list. Uh, you know, among midfielder, uh, midfielders that could actually join the you know join the Arsenal Football Club in January. 
uh, his contract will be six months off, uh, you know, off his time limit. Borussia Mönchengladbach obviously are looking at not getting zero money from his transfer. So they are saying if the player wants to leave in January, well and good. If any club comes in with the right offer, just like Fiorentina, if any club comes in with the right offer, they will be very, very, very open to selling the player. Now, for me, Gladbach will be doing a very, very worst decision. They're not fighting for Champions League. They might try to fight for Champions League. They might try to fight for Europa League. But at the end of the day, losing a, you know, a talent, losing a player like Dennis Zakaria for free won't make any sense for me in the summer if I'm a Gladbach fan. So what I would suggest and what I think uh, Gladbach should do, not because I'm an Arsenal fan and not because I'm a, a, I'm a big Zakaria fan, but I still think, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, Gladbach should sell to us in January. So uh, in January, the price could be around 15 to 21 million pounds. Yes, I feel that. You know, I feel that. Uh, I like that. I I I, I like the um, uh, you know the sound of that. 15 to 21 million. We could actually make it a bargain uh, and sign him below 16 million pounds because his contract is running down in the summer. As one player that would actually do two things: one, step in for Granit Xhaka, and also step in for Thomas Partey, but as well step in for uh, you know step in as the long-term replacement of Granit Xhaka, and definitely and ultimately as a long-term replacement and partner for Thomas Partey. So if I think about that, when Xhaka gets injured. That Dennis Zakaria steps in. Uh, when Pate gets injured, Dennis Zakaria steps in. Very, very good CDM. Very good midfielder. I think Arsenal should go for that one. Definitely, it will be a very, very wise signing. Now, th you know, speaking about wise signings and speaking about players whose contracts in, uh, are running down uh, in the midfield and could join Arsenal, especially uh, in January, we are speaking about Frank Casey. Now, Frank, you know, Frank Casey is a very, very special occasion because for him, he is Iv Ivorian, he's African. That means he's not going to miss the African Cup of Nations. And maybe his signing, his signature in, gen in the January transfer window, to many people, won't make any sense. But for me, the quality of the player and the availability at the moment, I would definitely take him in, in, in the January transfer window. Looking at um, Frank Casey, one of the things you're going to you know, really appreciate about him is his ability to move the ball. He's, you know, he's a bowler. He's a very, 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 very talented bowler um, in the midfield. Arsenal still uh, want to take advantage of the situation that Milan have failed to capitalize to extend his contract, to extend his deal uh, beyond 20 22. So if I look at uh, what's going to happen uh, with uh, Frank Casey, it's, you know, it's very, very difficult. There's a lot of competition on him. There's, uh, there's Manchester United there. There is Tottenham. There is Liverpool and Arsenal all being linked with the same player. Look, uh, I think Frank Casey will want Champions League. I think Frank Casey will want a club that's going to give him the right amount of money. And I think Frank Casey will, will want big competition. Can Arsenal you know, give him uh, that competition? Probably uh, if we go you know, for Champions League or Europa League in the summer, um, I think we can actually get him. It would be a very, 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 very nice partner for Thomas Partey. My only problem with Frank Casey uh, is um, if he becomes pivot pivotal uh, in Arsenal as well as uh, Thomas Partey, both of them African. So that can you know, that means that come the next round of African Cup of Nations, both of our midfield pivot will actually be out for AFCON. That is a little bit scary, but it doesn't mean that we can go for two African midfielders and they can actually work out. So, Frank Casey, another special one, another special talent, another really, really good player. Can Arsenal get him for a bargain for a very, very cheap price in the January transfer window? Probably, and uh, you know, probably sign him off, uh, you know, in, in January and wait for him to arrive in the summer. But still, you know, speaking about. Uh, quick fix and January and midfielders. We have our own two players, Chamberlain and Ramsey. Now both of these have been linked with, you know, back with, uh, you know, back uh, to a move to, uh, to, uh, to uh, back with a move to Arsenal. And I've always felt like we don't need to be nostalgic. We don't need to be, uh, you know, regressive. We need to keep mo you know, moving forward 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 because yes guys we love our players to come back we want you no know, we would love many arsenal players to come back i'll definitely take so many players you know uh, uh, you know at arsenal back at, at arsenal at the moment but we have to look at the future we have to look at uh, you know some of the players that have actually left arsenal in a bad way and we have to look ahead not backwards now you know when, when we talk about you know, looking you know ahead um, and backwards that means ramsey 
and Chamberlain do not come back. Chamberlain, for me, at the moment, will not leave Liverpool. They're losing around three players, uh, you know, in their squad. Keita is leaving, Salah is leaving, Mane is leaving. And, of course, we know the versatility of Chamberlain. He can be a winger, he can be a midfielder, he can be box-to-box. -box, he can do so many roles, uh, you know, around the pitch. So, I don't think Jagen Klopp is going to let go of Ale Alex Oxley Chamberlain. At the moment, knowing very well that Keita is going to be out in January, either with an injury or in Afghan. So, Chamberlain yes um you know linked with us no ateta has been linked with the man uh, saying that um you know he loves the man and he would love to actually sign him uh, on a permanent deal uh, as reported by the mirror that we would love to sign him on a permanent deal in the summer uh, after you know, after using him for six months on loan yes i might believe it yes i might not believe it but at the end of the day i do not take chamberlain back because i want new players i want players with the vision that we have you know started to create the same thing goes with aaron ramsey juve are actually offering any club uh 60 percent wages for the player if you take him on loan that is beautiful that is brilliant they're actually letting him um, you know go on a free and if you don't want to take him uh, on a free they'll give you the player and pay 60 percent of his wages in january now arsenal for Arsenal, that could be a very very good opportunity but look why don't we go for better players why do when why do we go back to ramsey uh, so that would be the question that many people ask and i'll be definitely agreeing with you guys now speaking about new challenges and new players and players that have never played for arsenal and probably players that do share the mentality and ambition uh and um, and vision that we want to implement at the side we have the uh, you know uh the one and only donny van der beek we've been linked with donny van der beek right from uh the summer of course i thought uh, a summer move for donny van der beek would have been very great would have been very wise but Manchester united were never going to let donny van der beek go of uh you know uh, you know uh, you know in uh, in the summer just like we refused to let ainsley matlan niles go and probably we were right uh, probably Mikel Arteta was right so we can give him the um the, the benefit of the doubt but look guys to uh, to put this you know whole thing into context if i you know, if i think about donny van der beek my heart rests i feel like we have a good player in there i feel like there is a, a magician in there i feel like despite the fact that Pogba will leave United might not actually use him United might not actually uh, utilize him to his, you know, to his full strength and I feel like if Arsenal went for Donny van der Beek yes it could work out but the question is can United let go of Donny van der Beek in January it would be absolutely crazy can, it, can they let him to, you know go to a rival like Arsenal it would be absolutely crazy and how much would we actually have to pay 45 million 60 million 70 million I don't know, but Donny van der Beek linked with us. No, I just feel like we are linked with a very, very good player in there. If you uh, look, t that would be mission rescue van der Beek. And I, I, I think I would be the captain if that mission came in and now uh, of course the last two players that we can actually talk about uh, as being linked with us now of course look uh, uh the others are not really really important the likes of bisuma i don't think bisuma is important uh, i think um you know uh, that would be in the summer but in january another african player is going to go out for uh, you know for afcon yavis bisuma not really but let us talk about marco asensio another one Another really, really interesting talent that has been linked with Arsenal in this general transfer. And Madrid have come out and said, it is 34 million, guys. It is 34 million. If you can pay that money, if you can give us 34 million pounds, yes, you take the player. Now, I'm really excited about Marco Asensio. However much I want to say, I don't know much about him. I've looked at him for some coming up for a couple of, you know, couple of years, and he has failed to break through. Uh, the, the, the the Real Madrid uh, first team, the likes of Eduardo Camavinga have come in and they have you know, sh you know surely replaced him and maybe there is some big question mark. But I've uh, I've already said this you know with clubs like Madrid and Barcelona that they send players and they actually kill them off. They bring in players and they actually kill you know kill them off. Look at Isco, look at Alexis Sanchez, look at Coutinho, look at Dembele, look at a couple of other players that have been, you know, that have been signed as highly prospective talents for these clubs and they have actually not worked out. So in my case, Marco Asensio could be one of those players that just needs to uh, to be brought back to light. That then j that just needs to be brought back to uh, you know the stage of big big performance. And I believe Marco Asensio, if Arsenal get Marco Asensio, yes, it could work out. Yes, it could. We, we could get I mean, ourselves uh, you know, a very, very good player, a very, very good midfielder um, in there. And the good thing with Marco Asensio is that he is not defensive. So if you brought him in and probably partnered him uh, in January uh, with, um, uh, with, uh, with Alba Sambi Lekonga, probably it could work out. My only concern with uh, Marco Asensio is that 
is he good enough? Is he that good? Right? We don't want to bring in players like Danny Ceballos to disappoint us because Madrid have definitely disappointed Arsenal when, you know, when, when it has come to transfers. It's only been Barcelona that I think um, have done a good job in, you know, it come, when it came to selling players to us. But Madrid, yes, um, you know, the job they have done is not absolutely very, very great. But guys, those are the players that are, uh, you know, are, are leading the rest uh, you know, to join Arsenal in January. Dusan Vlahovic. Uh, one of them, Alexander Isak, uh, another one, Marco Asensio, Frank Kessi, Donny van der Beek, Noah Lang, Rafinha, Chamberlain, and Aaron Justin Ramsey. Smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. In the comment box below, let me know which player you would love Arsenal to sign. And I'll speak to you very, very soon in the next one. Don't forget, I always do a show early in the morning, uh, you know, uh, between 5, uh, between 11 and midday and always um i do a live stream at 4:45, uh you know p.m and one live stream at 9 p.m so three shows on a daily basis one 11 a.m the second one is a live stream at 4:45 p.m and the third one is also a live stream at 9 p.m speak to you soon